We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. But the problem with these are all white men, right? And so you've either got white men developing characters of color and they're the only ones that get a chance to thrive. Right. Or you have, you know, ta Coates do a badass run on Black Panther that almost nobody read until it became the basis for the movie. You know, yeah, I, I'm one of those people. I didn't check out ta Coates until his uh, Captain America run, which I thought right. was terrible but even so yeah it wasn't I, as good a fit as his as yeah his, his he, just, he just didn't mesh with that character as much and i think that has a lot to do with it but last question so i don't take any more of your time okay. i was gonna ask your favorite female character in gaming but because we've talked a lot dc my channel's dc overall favorite character in the dc comics mythos power girl ah, i love power it power girl power girl poison ivy I would have said Batwoman in the J.H. Williams, the third run. Oh, so good. Those those are, I really like the way he def differentiated Kay Kane. Um, you know, Greg, Greg Rocca did a really good job of making, you know, her military background relevant. I liked yep. the story with her and Renee Montoya. Uh, and then they had her with Maggie Sawyer for a while too, didn't they? But, you know, Power Girl is just... Um, she's physically powerful. It's right in the right? name. <laughs> she's not Supergirl. She's Power Girl. And the fact that she's this busty, you know, muscular computer programmer, right? Like she's Ted Cord meets like, I don't know, Superman, but not because she doesn't have a symbol on her chest. Right. Just so much potential for that character. So much untapped potential. I think my my favorite super popular character is Poison Ivy. Oh, I love Poison she, Ivy. I love the seductress Poison Ivy, though. Not necessarily the newer version of her. In my I opinion. I like the legit misandrist hates yeah. men, but will use eco terrorist eco terrorist Poison Ivy. I would love yeah. to see a Harley and Ivy movie or it would probably be better as a series but they work they work well together because i mean harley isn't quite past her wanting to be liked by boys thing ivy so past it yeah she and, moved on decades ago <laughs> but ivy is too bitter right like she's too far the other side and harley's cuteness with ivy's vampiness it just works so well together and i i have I have no idea why they haven't gone there. That just seems to be such a slam dunk for me. I think they're just afraid of the inherent sexiness of that character. And they shouldn't be. No, like, there's nothing to fear. And that's what I want to say about Power Girl is mm -hmm. I think my favorite thing I ever read from her was when question about her boob window. Yeah. She said it makes her feel powerful. Like just. The idea that being sexy can make you feel feel powerful, and now it makes you like. I even noticed it in Star Girl when I watched it yesterday. Like you were only allowed to be sexy if you're a villain anymore. Yeah, and, and it's, it's I, a shame. I was so happy they kept the bare midriff. On, I mean, personally, I think Wildcat's probably the sexiest member of that team. Oh yeah, but I Cindy had the stilettos, the song, everything that went with her as a villain and i just was like what? did you see did you see the uh first season yeah oh yeah okay yeah C uh, cindy see i thought there were a lot there's a great show about how no woman had to be one thing right so they yeah. can all be really defined personalities i mean you've got yolanda's like yolanda is tragedy Right. That girl can't get a break. Same and, with Beth, though. Oh, Beth, I love Beth. I, Beth my heart broke favorite. for her. Oh, <laughs> and and it, 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 your heart breaks because she keeps smiling. I know. Right? And I'm like, how do you have, I, I always say I'm like, you know, uh, 
I have hope springs eternal with me. That is the embodiment of hope springs eternal in the character oh. Beth. No matter what she faces, she's always smiling. It's amazing. And and the people that are pissed off because Dr. Midnight was blind and she's not blind and kiss off on yeah, that. Yeah, it's that so good. Is so adorable. Like, and and when they were trying to, you know, oh, she's annoying. She never stops talking. Like, shut up. She's cute. I love Beth. But, I love it. You know, Courtney, Yolanda, Beth, um, Cindy, they're allowed to be individual people, right? And they, they've dropped hints of more characters. They yeah. keep mentioning um, Johnny Thunder too, Jakeem, right? Jakeem Thunder, yeah. Jakeem I think Thunder. He, I think it was cast, so. Well, they keep mentioning him, and the pen is in her room, right? The I know, pen but is I'm in like, her room. Like, I'm like, the brother is going to go up there, and he's going to need to write something down for his, you know, yeah. they're going to be doing the uh, paper route. And, it, it, and then you keep feeling bad for the brother because you want him to catch a break, too. It's like, they're doing a great job with that show, and same with Superman and Lois. Very good. Very good. I did not think I was going to like um, Jordan Kent just because he's, you know, like, why do they need two kids? Jonathan Kent right. was adorable, but it's those kids are really good actors. The two yeah. guys who play the kids, they actually like I think they're they're really great examples of young men who are really nice guys and they're not dicks and they're still cool. Yeah. I, just, I, I totally get that. Yeah. And they're the emotion, the sheer emotion you see on those kids' faces. It's like, man, I wish I could act that good just for a minute. I swear. <laughs> like Tyler it's so Hodges good. is a great Superman. He's a great Superman. Oh, yeah. He won me over. He he's becoming my favorite. And I'm a Christopher Reeve girl from like way back in the day. <laughs> so, you know, Henry Cavill's a great Geralt of Rivia, but is Superman isn't even in my top three. Uh, Tyler Hotchner's just great in he that part. Awesome. And I love the reveal with John Henry Irons. That was oh, like, what a great fake out, eh? I know. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm okay with it. You know, different. We're we're exploring the multiverse. Lex Luthor, we've seen black before. Okay, you know, whatever. And then they did that, and I was like, yes, that's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> like, I was oh. so happy. And he, again, like, there's a there's a thing where they could pull him off that show, spin him off into his yes. own show, like season three, and I would watch the crap out of that. Oh yeah. Like, absolutely, hands down, I would watch a show with him in the league. Now, would I watch, would I have been as ready to watch a Steel show out of the gate? Maybe not. But now that I know him and like him, I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch a spinoff. For yeah, sure. absolutely. I, I think that's what, that's what they need to do. Yeah. That's a perfect formula. Like you were saying with the comics, do the same with the TV shows. Jeff Johns okay. is doing a fantastic job with and, both of those. And I think he, I think. Yeah, we'll continue to. They should start cycling uh characters in and out of Legends of Tomorrow too. That worked really well with Constantine. Yeah. Like Con Matt, what's his name? Matt Smith. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Sorry, Matt Smith, Doctor Who. Uh Matt Ryan's great in the part. The show, the original show was a hot mess. Yeah, I and I dipped out on that after season one. <laughs> it, it was not, I don't think it got a season two, but him coming over to Legends. He was actually able to be more. Oh, no, I meant Legends of Tomorrow. Sorry. Oh, oh, you should. Season one was terrible. It really? only gets good season two. Oh, oh my God. gosh. Season one was garbage of Legends of Tomorrow. Once they get um, Rip Hunter out of the way and uh, Sarah Lance becomes leader of the team, much, much better. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I'll have to check it out. I oh. heard. Exactly that, opposite. No, that first season was crap. It, it, <laughs> you know, they they shuffle, they add a few people, and it's one of those shows that they've moved. Characters have moved on. People leave. People join. It's different. It's a different stupid comic book trope every season. But they just drill down on the stupid so deep that it feels Silver Age. To me. Oh, I like that. <laughs> it's, it's just dumb. Like it's dumb, but it's also like one of the most diverse representative shows on television. 
I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to check it out because I, I literally left after season one. I oh, never went one back to it. Bad. Season and one I, was bad. I just thought it wasn't good enough to continue to put my time and effort into. Oh, that first season <laughs> it was way too serious. Sarah Lance constantly had snot in her hair. Firestorm had nothing to do as Firestorm <laughs> because you had Firestorm, but then you had Heat Wave and they both basically had the same power. Why yeah. do you need both of them? So, <laughs> exactly. you know, half of them got left on the ship all the time. Oh, it was that first season was bad. But oh, I'm going to have to check it out then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, once they shuffled the cast around and just got really stupid. I love that show. And then, yeah, uh, Matt Ryan as Constantine, he just chews the scenery so well. And there's better Constancy Constantine stories in Legends of Tomorrow than there were on the Constantine show. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty and, good. And they actually use the fact. Have you read the the, the Hell, uh, Hellblazer comic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know how Astra is a bitch when he finally oh, yeah. tracks her down they use that astra in Legends oh that's of awesome and i was like sweet they haven't really figured out what to do with her yet but she's the actress has that edge and i'm like this is awesome and they managed to work a lucifer cameo in oh see you know what i always I'm bad about this is shipping characters. And I always do that ever with Constantine and Lucifer. Is that one thing I got to ask? Do they do like erasing his, him being by? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't see. I wasn't sure. That. Sometimes they do that in the comics. Yeah. Like it will be nothing. Yeah. It'll be nothing like you would normally read in Hellblazer or anything. And well, it's like, well, this is weird. I was curious. He's kind of the city bus. <laughs> I love it. Which is kind of accurate. I mean, they have this tragic, tortured story with his ex boyfriend one episode, and then he's he's with various female characters in other episodes. And sometimes it's just a fling. Sometimes it's more meaningful. But yeah, they they really do embrace that. It's a it's a very LGBTQ plus friendly show. Oh, good. Um, in general, and yeah that's one of the things i like about it is it the, the characters are just people and the various characters are allowed to be more than one thing you know um they actually have uh wentworth miller i think it was that i don't remember if it was out of the terrible crossover but he comes back as um uh a, a, a character from another dimension and he actually is gay and he actually does kiss his husband on screen and i'm like finally like wow oh good yeah, for them yeah it it was uh it was a nice and and again you don't you don't hear these things no right? you like, only ever hear the er sjw's or the er opposite you know it's yeah that's a shame you shows do not get rewarded for doing things right and that's what makes me mad because i you know i would rather talk about how awesome this stuff is yeah and and promote stuff i think is good in that way than you know this constant hey guys slow your roll okay <laughs> like like as and the thing the thing I can't stand, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation where I end up defending stuff. I don't even personally think it's that great just because I don't think it's anywhere near as bad and world ending as people are making it out to be. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think at some point you have to. You have to kind of be honest about it, of course, but I also don't want to be like, OK, it's a zero compared to it's actually probably a five or a six. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't see how anybody watches the masters of the universe cartoon and thinks it's, it's garbage. No, I don't need, I don't get it. That, that Orco episode alone, like, Oh my God. Like <laughs> oh, all the feels, right? I, know. I never knew his name was Oracle. And I'm like, Oh, this just added a whole new, le you know what I mean? Like there was so much, within that whole show that they did that was good 
That... I mean, Triclops and Trapjaw in that weird tech cult and, you know, the Merman episode and the whole thing in the Fright Zone with Scareglow where they work in Battle Armor He-Man. I'm like, how can... People just got so hung up on one detail that they ruined their enjoyment of the whole because yep. of that. And I was really surprised that anybody took the interpretation they did from, from the mid-season cliffhanger, right? Because that was an 80s thing they did all the time. Oh, no, yeah. the character is dead. <laughs> You know, it's Schrodinger's character. Are they coming back? Are they not? And I got, I got friggin' brigaded on Twitter and people hate bombed my channel for comparing that cliffhanger to Wrath of Khan, you know, Star Trek Wrath of Khan right. and The Empire Strikes Back, which you have not seen. So I'll fill you in why that's relevant. Um, Harrison Ford didn't want to come back. Right. After Empire Strikes Back. He wanted to be killed off in Empire Strikes Back. George Lucas talked him down to the Carbonite in case he changed his mind. Obviously, he did. He came back from Return of the Jedi. I, of course, regretted it because Harrison Ford's a grumpy cuss. Um, <laughs> similarly, in Star Trek Wrath of Khan, Leonard Nimoy wanted out. He wasn't feeling the character anymore. So they killed off Spock at the end. In... Have you seen Wrath of Khan? No. Okay, it's this classic scene from film where he's being poisoned on one side of the glass and Kirk is on the other and and they do this like touching through the glass, which everybody would claim was a ship signal now. But back oh, then yeah. it was just friendship, you know, and, and he said, I am and always have been your friend. Um, and it was this big moment because Spock is a Vulcan. He's not emotional. He, you know, it was this touching moment. And then he dies. And then they spend an entire third Star Trek film bringing him back. So I made a joke on Twitter where I said, could you imagine if Empire Strikes Back came back today? Fuck you, George Lucas. You killed Han oh Solo God. for work shit about feelings, right? Because nobody knew if he was coming back, right? And I said, or Star Trek Wrath of Khan. Fuck you, Gene Roddenberry. You killed Spock over dumb shit about friendship. You know, people went fucking crazy. They accused me of lying about what happened in the empire strikes back and as i pointed out the tweet was a hypothetical you can't lie right. a hypothetical it's inherently hypothetical also no they didn't know if han solo was coming back like that character could have essentially been dead meaning written out p.s no prince adam's not fucking dead you idiots like <laughs> of course he's not of course and i got called a liar got my channel hate bombed, got oh this light God. bombed, and then got accused of lying about the fact that I was joking. And I said, who the fuck sincerely writes in all caps in tweet? Oh my goodness. They wouldn't let it go. And this is one of those things where a narrative builds and people get invested in their version of the story instead of admitting, yeah, we jumped the gun. She's got a yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I... I was accused of using fake quotes on IMDb because, you know, anybody can go in and edit that. Oh, and my I, God. I finally <laughs> found an article from Screen Rant that details the whole Schrodinger's carbon freeze, like the whole Schrodinger's carbonite at the end of Empire Strikes Back with Han Solo. Um, and I posted it. It said, here, here's one from Screen Rant. You know, the website y'all like because Kevin Smith was mean to it. It was like they vanished like ghosts. Oh, of course. They just disappeared from Twitter. They couldn't admit they were wrong. They couldn't admit I was right. They kept hate bombing my YouTube videos, but gone. Like, it is very rare that I get absolutely zero responses to a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was just so craven. And that, that's the point I'm like, unsubscribe from my channel. Hate yeah. bomb my videos. I don't give a fuck. You guys can't change reality. 
<laughs> exactly. At, at that point, they are trying to make reality conform to their feels because they just can't admit they pulled a straight up SJW move and tried to pull a lived experience thing. Right. Yeah. I did not feel you were joking. Fuck off. You can't read my mind. I'm yeah. doing comedy. That's a big source of my jobs over the years is comedy. I'm a comedian. I make jokes. You watch any of my content. I say you will take my right to joke from my cold dead hands. You know, don't tell me I'm not joking, especially yeah. when it's in fucking all caps. <laughs> you know, and and oh goodness. The the only purpose of a hate bomb of something like that is is trying it, it, it's a logical fallacy. It's an appeal to popularity and it doesn't work. You know, YouTube subscribers rise, they fall. YouTube can go do a purge and you lose 300 subscribers. Oh, easy. It ain't that deep, right? So unsubscribing, knowing that these people will lurk and eventually be back, you know, or um, one guy keeps leaving 12 comments on every video I make saying how disappointed he is in me now and how much <laughs> I've changed. And it's like, dude, do you I not realize... <laughs> Do you not realize like these engagements are helping my algorithm? Like every comment you leave helps me. But I finally, you know, commented on the guy actually just today. And I said, you keep saying how horribly disappointed in me you are and how I've changed. You have not given me a single shred of tangible detail about what your fucking issue actually is. Please enlighten me and stop commenting to everybody with a positive comment about how disappointed you are in me like i don't understand why somebody on the internet thinks at this point i really care whether people approve of me or not you know that that tells yep. me a lot about what their motivations are i'm yep. not here to gain approval um I've never been a one of the popular girls, right? I've always been, um, you know, the weird kind of, you know, not quite feminine enough, bad at being a girl chick. Right. Why do they think I suddenly care whether people like what I say? It's not supposed to be about that, right? Like, people should be able to express their opinions because it's freedom of expression, right? I'm going to defend opinions I don't like so that I protect my right to freedom of expression. Absolutely. I I'm not going to attack someone just because I think they're wrong, right? I'll passionately argue my viewpoint, but I'm never going to tell somebody, no, it's not okay. You like that. Yeah, no. You know, I will tell someone if they have a terrible fucking reason for liking something that, hey, there's a problem with your thinking here. You know, yeah, that's a little different than attacking somebody. Right. Like if people are refusing to criticize something, for instance, just because it has boobs in it and they like boobs and so everything else is fine. No, I'm sorry. I have a problem with that logic. Yeah. Right. Like busty women cleavage should not be used to paper over shit product. That's not what we want. We want women of all shapes, sizes, and colors in, in good stuff, right? Yes. But if somebody's just like, I like it, I know it's not objectively very good, but I enjoyed it. I can think of a million movies and TV shows. I mean, there's this movie called Hudson Hawk. It stars Bruce Willis. Um, it was panned by everyone at the time. He played this singing cat burglar. <laughs> but I loved that freaking movie. And I will I I will argue that Hudson Hawk is an enjoyable movie. It is widely seen as crap. I liked it, right? I'm not saying it's the greatest movie in the world, but I'll defend my right to like something that I exactly. just happen to right. Like I don't understand why people go on the warpath over things they don't like and then get mad that they feel things are being taken away from them because what are they doing to the people who like stuff when they go on the war path like that? Yep. And the problem with the YouTube, at least in my opinion is the algorithm rewards me 
being critical of this comic book over me loving this one yeah. and want to promote it yeah. because I'll get 25% of the views I would if I hated something. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that that was the unfortunate thing about, you know, some video games that I have just legitimately hated. Um, they get crazy traffic. Yeah, but it, it, I don't it's crazy. I don't want to be the person that just hates everything. Exactly. Right. And I and I think I've grown to try to be better about that and push stuff forward. That's great. And that's good. And that deserves recognition. But you're going to you're going to take a loss in revenue or you're going to take a loss in views. It's just going to happen. <laughs> you're not just going to take a loss in revenue, not just going to take a loss in views. The negativity in the comments is such a damn downer. Like it the video is. I did recently singing the praises of Stargirl. Hard disagree. And this guy goes through all the things he thinks are wrong with it. And this is like, dude, you just don't understand the Silver Age sensibility of this show. Yep. Like all the old school cars and the small town that seems like a snapshot in time. All of this just went right over your head. You just didn't like it. And you yeah. can't tell the difference between this isn't to my taste and this is bad. Yes, exactly. You know, that's a shame. Yeah. Like Zack Snyder and Christopher Nolan's stuff is not to my taste, but I'll still admit, yeah, the Snyder cut was better than the Whedon cut. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> There was at least there was a solid three hour movie in that six hour movie. Yes. Right? There was not a solid three hour movie in, in Whedon's hunk of shit. Like it just wasn't. That was bad. Like so bad. What? What? People need to take farmhouses away from creators. <laughs> I'm at that point. The minute I see a farmhouse now, I'm like, oh, God, no. Except in Superman and Lois. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs>